Hey, it's Mark with another video, and I just finished watching Masters Cup footage at the De La Viega Disc Golf Course, and I am super excited to talk about this golf course. I thought the tournament was incredibly fun to watch, and definitely a different style of course than we've been seeing on the Pro Tour, and I saw in the interviews with the pros before the tournament that there was rumor and speculation that perhaps this is the last time this tournament would be held at De La Viega. I want to make the case that that should not be. I know there are different things in terms of parking and space and all that, but I think they should really, really try to figure that out and keep the tournament running there because it was a treat to watch the Masters Cup this year. All the coverage, I think I, I watched so many hours of the coverage of that tournament. Uh, fun fact, actually, I've actually been to De La Viega. I had no clue at the time that it was a disc golf, a big part of disc golf history. I didn't, I didn't play disc golf. I was in high school. Uh, around that age, and I played the golf course, uh, the ball golf course there a few times as I grew up maybe two hours inland from Santa Cruz, and it's actually one of my favorite golf courses of all time. It's, it's a little rough around the edges, but super quirky and fun and entertaining on every hole, kind of like how the disc golf course looks. So when I go back to California at some point, I'm definitely going to make a trip out to Santa Cruz to play the disc golf course, maybe try to get both of them in on the same day. That would be fun. Anyways, but I want to highlight five things that I saw at the De La Viega course that I think make it awesome. The first thing is that there are tight and varied lines. Now you've seen, if you watch my, my course reviews, that I don't love courses that have just tunnel shots all the way through there where there's one path you got to make the shot uh, maybe it curves right maybe it curves left whatever but there's one there's one tunnel for uh, the disc to go through and you just have to execute that shot de la viega had tight windows and tight gaps for the players to throw through but on many of these holes they were varied and uh, created lots of different shots. Not only that, but there was variation in terms of uh, elevation, uphill, downhill, turning right, turning left, uh, doing S turns. Every hole challenged a different type of throw. That kind of variation makes up for a lot in terms of for the fact that like De La Viega is a, only a par 56, uh, I tend to prefer courses that uh, have higher pars. I think par fours are underrated in disc golf. They're the, the bread and butter of ball golf for good reason. And that's because they create really interesting decisions. Uh, this tournament only had two par fours, and honestly, one of them wasn't that good. Uh, but the variation on the course really makes up for that. Uh, the second reason I thought this course was awesome to watch uh, was that it forced difficult decisions. When you see a card and every single player has a different route to the basket, a different method by which they're trying to reach the basket, you know that's an interesting hole because all these top-tier players are struggling with the hole. They're struggling with what their what their decision is going to be on how to approach the hole. That makes for an entertaining disc golf hole. If everyone's throwing the same shot on the hole, uh, usually not the most interesting hole. Uh, sometimes it can be, it depends. The third reason, and this is my favorite, was putting fear. I actually looked up some statistics on this. I looked at the statistics from uh, De La Viega, uh, this tournament. I looked at the OTB Open, which I would consider to be the easiest putting conditions you can have. Wasn't particularly windy, no elevation change, uh, just a ball golf course with grass. And I looked at the stats from the Dynamic Disc Open, which is on a ball golf course, but it's windy. It was a windy tournament. And even compared to the windy tournament... Uh, at, at Dynamic Discs, uh, the stats at De La Viega uh, were, I would say, two to five percentage points lower on average in terms of circle one uh, make percentage for the for the men. I didn't look up the, the, the women's stats. Uh, at two to five percentage points of a difference. And I only looked at circle one because at circle two, there's a lot of fear and you actually saw players lay up. I saw Ricky Wysocki lay up a 40 foot putt. I have never seen that before because of so many drop offs near the basket and the hard pan ground. Uh, but even in situations where they're trying to sink the putt within the circle one, 
they were less successful. And I think that's the psychological fear uh, affecting their putting. And it's great to watch the best players in the world feel intimidated. Maybe it's you know not so fun to them, although I think a lot of them really like that course because of the challenge. Uh, but that was super fun to watch, putting fear. The fourth reason I thought it was awesome were the ground dynamics. So one of the interesting things about Daylight is that you can see how old of a course it is because of all the erosion. All the ground has been compacted, and uh, there's dirt erosion that has uh, exposed a number of large roots from all the trees you already have all these awesome gnarled trees around and then you see the root structures and that creates these interesting ground dynamics where you have hard pan ground uh, with periodically roots running through it and players had to really be careful with how they landed their approach shots typically they tried to land them really flat and soft um, and even something as simple as like a 200 foot, uh, even, you know, slightly low ceiling approach shot became really touchy and really difficult. Whereas on most other courses they're playing, a 200 foot approach shot isn't really anything at all. The ground dynamics there with those drop offs and those cliffs that they're trying to avoid made for really tense moments on otherwise pretty everyday shots. And the fifth and final reason is the history. Now, I don't know. I, I got, I've gotten into disc golf uh, only within, seriously, only within the last couple of years. I knew about it before. I played once or twice uh, back in the day. I did, you know, at college we played with regular Frisbees and threw at various trees and made up our own course on campus, that kind of thing. But I've only been serious about it the last couple of years. Uh, but seeing the history literally built into that course was super cool. Um, and I think a lot of the early disc golf courses are probably not really suitable for today's professional game because of how short they are, uh, presumably, and, and probably just easier because they were playing with different equipment in the early days. Uh, they didn't have our modern discs, and they certainly don't have, uh, didn't have uh, as many extremely excellent athletes playing the game. Seeing the history, though, built into that course and hearing about the stories of past events and how many people have played that course, and just the quirks of it, right? It's, I believe, it's the full course of Daylaw is 29 holes. Uh, the pros play a 24-hole version for the tournament. Uh, it's that kind of quirkiness and, like, homegrown casual stuff that makes disc golf really cool, and you can see it on the course. I mean, the course looks so cool. It even had a couple of new additions that they were saying from last year where a couple of trees fell and actually made the holes more interesting. Two holes, one where you have this giant uh, root structure that's sticking out where the tree fell uh, that actually made the hole more interesting and more challenging. Another one where a very large tree trunk fell right across the front of this long par three that otherwise would be a pretty boring par three. It's just kind of an open shot. But now you got this, this large tree trunk to clear uh, deep down the fairway, which made it more interesting. That kind of just geographical coincidences that have built up over time shows the history of the course and makes it that much more interesting. Is it the best course in the world? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. But it was certainly extremely fun to watch on coverage, and I really, really hope that they don't get rid of that tournament in the future. Thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, please subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. I do course reviews. I talk about my progress to trying to become a better player. Uh, just hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching.